Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Oh, wow, so many, so many awesome people. Great, 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 great. We'll just let everybody gather for a moment, propagate, propagate the screen. So many people, new people, old people, not old people, but people who we we already know and love and see here a lot. Super cool. All right. And on to page two. We have lifted, we have made it to page two. So well done. All right. Well, welcome, welcome everybody to the VO Dojo's Get to Know VO series. Um, I'm Tish Hicks. I'm the Master Sensei of the VO Dojo here in Burbank, California. And I am joined by our beautiful, wonderful, amazing team members, Kelsey V and Jeffrey Gilbank. They're here in the backgrounds making everything go. And if you have any questions or problems, they're here to help. Um, uh, and uh, we are joined by dojo member and nth degree member nick santasir he is based in new york city and is an amazing in addition to being a fantastic voice talent is an amazing voice or uh, sound engineer as well so as we um as we dive into our subject today how to build a home studio um uh, I am really pleased to have you here, Nick. And um, yeah, uh, if, if you want to introduce yourself for a second, just uh, let us know a little bit about you. And then I'll, I'll um, carry on with uh, talking about what we're going to talk about today. Talk about what we're going to talk about. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Tish. Um, mm -hmm. Hi, everybody. Nice to see you all. Um, I've done audio in whatever form, be it theater, voiceover, or anything like that for just about the past 25, 27 years, something around that. A few, I okay. I haven't actually done <laughs> voiceover more so in the past 10 to 12. Um, and then really hardcore because pandemic and lockdown, where else are you going to go? Mm -hmm. um, I also consult in home studios as well, especially around the New York City area, which is more of my specialty of how can you do this with New York City sounds around you? There are ways. Mm -hmm. um, it's also yeah. along the lines of you're going to sound like you, it's going to sound good and the outside is not going to interfere to a point. Nothing is foolproof unless you live in the middle of nowhere. Right, right, right. And there's where the song really applies. If you can, if you can get good sound there, you can get it anywhere, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. It's like, oh, there's going to be a police siren. That's going to happen. There's mm -hmm. an airplane overhead. That's going to happen. Those things will never be cut out unless you are like super, super wealthy with what you've built. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's that's one of the things we're going to be talking about. Um, uh, yeah, so as we get started, we'd love uh, Jeffrey uh, just put a prompt in the uh, in the chat to find out where you are from, and um, we would love to hear where um, where you're at in the development of your booth, or if you're taking um, taking your your studio to the next level. And we'll be talking about the evolution of the evolution of that process. So, um, yeah, where where are you guys from? Let's see. Um, oh, here we go. Let's see. Texas. Marla's from Texas. Hey, Marla, how are you? Um, good, good, good. Um, yeah. And um, if you want to fa raise your raise your fake hands, um, who does not have a booth? Raise your f fake hands, which is in the um, response, I believe. CJ doesn't have a booth yet. Um, there we go. Greer, okay, cool, 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 cool. Who has? Oh, okay. There we go. Okay, so some people do not have a booth yet. Elena, excellent. And um, who has one and would like to improve? And Jamie has a sort of booth. Um, <laughs> be of something, yeah. Okay, great, great, great. So we have a little mixture. Um, well, this is this is going to be um, more of um, 
an overview and how to be thinking about things. We'll have some specific information. Um, um, yeah, and ju just your closet, Robert, is 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 fine. That's we're, we're going to talk about the evolution of things, and frankly, as long as it sounds okay and you don't suffocate, and um, and you can see, um, it doesn't matter what it looks like or where it's at, as long as it's impactful, and then you can make it fancier and and everything. So, good, good, good. So we have a little bit of a blend. All right. Well, let's. Let's jump in and um, so we'll show the presentation and then we'll have time at the end to answer your questions too. So if you have if you have questions that are on your mind, you can put them in the chat. Okay, let me share my screen and get our our presentation for today going. So can everyone see that? Yeah. Okay. Great. All right. So, uh, welcome to the VO Dojo. This is our free monthly uh, webinar called Get to Know VO. Today, we're talking about how to build your home studio. Um, I'm Tish Hicks. I'm the Master Sensei of the VO Dojo. Um, I've been doing this for more than 25 years as well. I'm originally from Chicago. I've been the voice of so many brands over those 25 years. Um, including I think Subaru hit its 13th year, 14th year, which is super, uh, super blessing. Um, and if you're new to the dojo, um, we are a holistic full training program that is designed to take you from I don't know to working pro. Basically, we meet you where you are and um, take you where, uh, help you get to where you want to be. So, um, we have our development division and our working pro division. So uh, everyone should fit somewhere in here. So that's a little bit about the dojo if you aren't familiar with us. Um, in addition to me, uh, we also have um, three other amazing senseis, Kat Campion in Minneapolis, uh, Terry Nicole in Atlanta, and uh, Stephanie Reggio in Arizona. So we are all here to guide and support you. So let's talk about getting started with your studio. So we're going to explore three different areas um, as we lay this out. The first um, is mindset. And this is very much how we approach things here at the dojo. Um, mindset first, the internal training first, and then we active, then we build skills, and then we act have ways of activating those. So, we'll talk about mindset. So, really, in terms of minds, and then we'll talk about the basic elements, and um, and then as we've been saying, there's an evolution to a studio, just as there's an evolution as you're building your career. So, um, the the evolution has had has been required to go faster than it used to have used to. And what you do absolutely need to be in this business is different than when I started 30 years ago. Doesn't matter what happened 30 years ago, because it's now. So um, so in, in terms of mindset, a great way to think about um, your studio is thinking about it as um, you would, uh, as you're gestating your voiceover career, um, or you've newly born, you, you've newly birthed your voiceover career, if you have your demo, or maybe you, you know, you've been, um, you have a, a, a voiceover career that's in its beginning stages. Wherever you are, you need a place where this career is going to live, where you're going to practice where it's going to live. So if you think about it, like getting a nursery together for a baby, at first, you know, you're having a baby, um, Nick's, uh, Nick's baby was just on, um, you know, you're having a baby, but you don't need to have everything right away. And then there's a point where you do need to have everything because soon there's going to be this baby that you're going to deal with every day and it needs a space to live right now, a baby can be in one of these drawers if needed, or you can put this whole fancy nursery together. 
So know that you can put some blankets in a drawer at first and, and the baby will be okay, right? So that's a great mindset um, to, to keep in mind. Um, let's keep on going with mindset. Um, what, uh, I think one of the things that comes up a lot when people are on the beginning of their journey and also within their journey is um, understanding where your relationship with technology is. Um, as I said, it is an absolute necessity to have some relationship with technology. Um, yeah, and, and so just to another uh, in the chat, where, where would you rate yourself on the tech spectrum? It's good to know where that is. Um, one being a technophobe, like, oh my God, I don't know anything about this. Uh, and 10 being a total gearhead, you can walk the talk, talk the walk, Oh, all the things like you, you know, a lot about gear and you, you um, understand it and you live and breathe it. Um, let me just open the chat here. Oh, actually, uh, Kelsey, can you, um, <coughs> can you shout out what we're, what we're seeing, where, where people are at? Yes. <clears throat> Looks like we have a mix. We have almost clueless, uh, sevens, <laughs> fives, fours, sevens, a lot of sevens. Mm -hmm. So upper mid range yeah well that is that is a really great place to be um in terms of your your internal internal alignment with this you you need to be able to do something but you don't have to worry so much about becoming a sound engineer you need to get your setup going you need to know um how to run it and you need to know um uh you know how to make sure how to keep it running, troubleshoot it, and develop your ear to know what things should sound like. But we don't want the anything that you're nervous about to keep you from anything. And we don't want you to get off track worrying about tech stuff when it doesn't matter how great a setup you have if you aren't good at doing the voiceover part, right? If your skills aren't competitive in, in that realm yet, right? So we, we want them in that, that sort of mid, mid range. So good, 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 good. It sounds like everyone's in a good place. Um, I think um, having come up in the old style where we, where we didn't have to do anything, we just went to our agents and there was someone who recorded auditions and when we went to sessions, there was someone who recorded there. We didn't even know how, we didn't need to know how to drive the car. We knew we need to know basic mic technique, but, um, you do need to know everything and be able to run a session by yourself. So the key here is keeping it simple. Um, let me just move this over. Hold on a second. Just get this out of the way. Get us out of the way. There again. Um, so yeah, get what you need. Get comfortable with it. Get help. Always have someone who knows something more than you do and get creative. There's not just one way to do this. There's not one way you have to get a booth or set your booth up. Once again, it needs to sound good. So, and understand that if you don't have a booth, this is just the beginning. You are here and you will reach here. Um, Nick, you did not start, you did not start with your, with your, uh, with your sound bricks, right? Oh, with no, your studio no. bricks. The with studio your bricks studio is a bricks. recent. It's a recent acquisition because baby was coming. Had to use the closet to be an actual closet. <laughs> and before that, fish saw I used to do the the box and the foam, and my head inside it with my phone as my screen. Mm -hmm. So it's like whatever works for you and whatever you can do, and you just build mm -hmm. up from there. It's like this is what I could afford. Now I can afford this. Now I can afford this. Mm -hmm. I didn't pay full price for the studio bricks. A friend was getting rid of it. Nice. So. Mm -hmm. There's That's always nice. there's always somebody, yeah, um, yeah. My we'll, we'll we'll talk about that later. Yeah. So so just understand that this it doesn't have to be the full enchilada. So um, let's talk about the elements once again. Let's create a framework of what you need to be thinking about and how to be thinking about it. Um, so in these elements, there's things that you need to do. And then things that uh, the things that you need to be able to do, 
is you need to be able to record. You need to be able to put what you've recorded into the computer. Um, you need to be able to edit and work on what you've been able to do. And then you need to be able to listen, listen back to what you've recorded. So those are the things, those are the four things that you need to do. Um, and this is basically called your audio signal flow. And we'll talk a little bit more about what those elements are. Um, but that's, that's, a, that's a good way to think about it. What, what equipment do you need to get the sound from your mouth into my ears, right? Those are all the things that, that need to happen to get those in. Um, and then there's things you need to have. Um, you need to have quiet, as Nick was saying before. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect stillness in a vacuum. In fact, not the vacuums do not make for a good sound because there's no sound. Um, you need air, you need ventilation. I think a lot of times as people put together their booths, they, so it sounds great and then it may not be inhabitable. So that is something and, and things that move air and quiet are sort of contradictory concepts. So um, something to keep into, into, um, into things. And then now more than ever, you need connectivity. How are you able to run a session, a, a, a session uh, from your booth? Because we all need to be able to do that now. So, um, so let's talk about recording. Um, and as I said, this is just laying out things that you might need. I don't necessarily want. Um, these are things. These are things that are recommendations that you can go explore. Um, I'm not saying like, and then get this and this and this, because each of us are going to have different needs and different requirements and different budgets. So this is just to give um, an idea of um, the basic element of recording that is a microphone. So there's several different kinds of microphones that you might hear about or explore or inherit or something. Um, um, Nick, do you want to, let's see, well, I, I guess I'll, I'll just, I'll, 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 I'll guide us through this. And then if there's anything you want to add, um, um, let's, let's do it that way. So a USB mic is, um, usually the most affordable and a great way to get started. Um, eventually you will probably want to move from a USB mic as you're developing your skills and get ready for session for session ready um, to, to be session ready. Um, but a USB mic is nice because it's pretty affordable and it just plugs right into your computer. So you it's it's everything that you need um, and it plugs right into your computer. Um, really, you can get started pretty easily and the quality of mics have risen to a level that um you can do with a mic that is not that expensive can be can be competitive um i know a lot of people um one of our dojo members uh jason vanderbreak who works all the freaking time now um he started out with an at 2020 and you know built his career from there so it, it is doable and then to notice that the higher end usb mics start becoming comparable with um, the, um, I don't want to say lower end, but the, the affordable end of the condenser mics, because just because something is less, uh, less pricey doesn't mean that it's not as effective, right? And the truth is that as you go, um, as you go um, up in quality and expense on a, microphone you also need to create the space in which that can that can um that can be actually used right so um so you need to make you ha make sure you have the space to use something that's that sensitive so um so usb mic a dynamic mic is something that uh um that captures sound physically um 
and a condenser mic is something that captures sound electronically. Um, usually, we would be working with a USB mic or a condenser mic. And Nick, hop in here. And um, what else? What else should people know about this distinction? And how do you tell? Sure. Um, most of the time, you're going to find somebody with a condenser because that's your Newman's. That's your Sennheiser 416 shotgun. Um, the only dynamic I know most people use is the Shure SM7B, which is not as user friendly as they try to make it sound. It's one of those things where when you know what you're doing with it, it gets a lot better. And it's more, it's more so a podcast. A lot of dynamics are used more for podcasts these days than anything mm -hmm. else. Um, Cause they don't catch as full of a sound of your voice. USBs are great for travel mics. Um, I started with very low tech. I started on a snowball. I then went to a Yeti. I then moved into to, um, XLR mics. My travel mic is the hype mic. I know Tish's travel mic is the hype mic as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and those are really great. Rose NT USB, I've been hearing really good stuff about lately as well, where they're just very nice and user friendly and mm -hmm. just plug and go. Um, the other thing is these days they're starting to make smaller interfaces. So your travel mic could be your condenser or another condenser if you wanted it to be. I've seen people using their Sennheiser as their travel mic with a box about this big and then mm -hmm. another box this big for all the rest of their gear other than the computer. It's yeah. all the technology is becoming smaller. It's becoming better every day. And I mean, I'll give you guys an example right now. The prices are changing left and right. I gave Tish all updated prices. And the last time we did this was several months ago. Mm. And that's how fast it's all changing. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's microphones. Um, any, let's see. Let me just make sure we're on time here. Let's keep on going through the let's keep on going through the presentation. But make note if you have any um, mentions, uh, any any questions about the microphone. So in addition to the microphone, you'll need something for it to stand on, so you can work. Um, ideally, standing. That's how you usually do sessions in a studio is standing, which gives you access to your whole body. Um, you can also uh, figure out. Uh, uh, how to create variations uh, that you can be sitting or standing. Um, that would be a boom arm. I have my mic on a stand with a boom arm so I can lift it up and lift it down. Um, a shock mount is something that goes around the microphone and protects it from vibrations from the floor. And then you might often see um, a pop filter. Let me see if I have one handy. I don't know if I have one handy because I actually don't really use a pop filter too much anymore because um, the way I approach it is um, putting my microphone. Oh, there's a pop filter. Look, there's one now. <laughs> so a pop filter is to keep the plosives from going the uh, plosive sounds. So um, here, do do this. This is this is your natural your, your natural built in pop filter is your finger. So if if um, if you're not sure what I'm talking about, um, put your finger up to your lips and then go puh, 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 and feel that pop of air, that that's a plosive sound that has a pop of air with it. And what we don't want is that going into the microphone, either that air pressure, um, the sound of that air pressure, and we don't want the spit from your mouth going into it either. So that's a pop filter. Um, now. Uh, tilt your head down a little bit and keep your finger there and go puh, 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 puh. So you see, if you tilt your head a little bit, you can keep it out of the mic. Or And what a pop filter does is just put something in between so that pressure doesn't go into mic. Um, and then you can also set your microphone from above so that the air goes underneath it, just like when you, tilt, just like when you uh, tilted your head down a little bit. So... Those are some things to think about. Recording. So that's the first thing you need to have. Anything to add there, Nick? Well, I saw we have a little question about, are there, is there a different variation of the quality of pop filters from CJ? And yes, well, yeah, there is. Let's, <laughs> yeah, there well, is. Well, <laughs> what, what, what do you look for in a pop filter and why? All right. So the basic pop filters are the fabric ones. Those are the cheap guys. They're going to be various sizes of, and various layers of fabric. The more expensive ones are metal. Um, and mm -hmm. they're going to be a lot stronger. They're going to do that. In all truth, though, if you've got your mic up here, unless you're talking like that, 
you don't need a pop filter. There's no reason for it. That's true of any microphone. I mean, if your microphone is down here and you're reading from here and it was get a pop filter because yeah, you're going to be covering that with whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of like the, the, the three little pigs, right? If you had a pop filter made of straw yeah, uh, exactly. or wood or, or bricks. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Cool. 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 Yeah. And just, just pop, just pop questions in and any other questions about microphones while we're here? I know I said something else, but it does make sense to answer the questions while we're here. So we're looking good. I can't see the chat, guys. So, all right. Well, well if you have questions, we'll we'll have time at the end. Um, so the second thing that you need to do is have something that can convert. This is called the audio interface, and basically, it takes the analog experience of your voice, which has um, which has a full sound wave <laughs> that that it makes. Um, and how does that that sound goes into the microphone and then it needs to be understood by the computer. So an audio interface converts things from analog to digital and then also then from digital to analog to to be able to get out again. Um, and it's also where you can calibrate you can calibrate the sound going in so when you're at the beginning of a session and the engineer checks your levels that interface is where the engineer will be making adjustments for the energy and um, for the energy and volume that you're speaking at to make sure that it doesn't um, that it doesn't distort. Um, we've got a range of a range of audio interfaces. Um, uh, I have to admit that I have my six hundred dollar. Uh, I have my Apogee Duet here. But at the moment, I'm plugged into my Focus Scarlet, um, my Focus Rite Scarlet. So, it's um, well. Maybe you can maybe you can talk a little bit about um, what what you're looking for in an interface, Nick, and and how well, what what difference does having a eleven hundred dollar versus a hundred and ninety nine dollar um, interface? What does that do? Yeah. There's not a huge difference except more bells and whistles. Mm -hmm. um, really, like the picture here is, I think that's a Focusrite second gen. I'm not positive mm -hmm. on that because the, the second and the third look very, very similar. But I have a third, and my buttons are not that colorful. So I'm assuming <laughs> that. Um, at the same point, you don't need anything like looking at a soundboard or looking like something that you've pulled out of the giant box of sound equipment that you see at theaters or music gigs. That's going to be overkill. Mm -hmm. all, all you need is something to plug the XLR cable into that'll convert it into a USB signal into your computer. Mm -hmm. That's it with a gain dial. If it has yeah. the headphone jack in it, that's a bonus. You don't actually need that. You can just run headphone through your computer and that's fine too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So good to know. Good to know the range of things. And once again, you can always upgrade as needed. Um, now, you do need a computer. You do need a computer and you do need one that's quiet and fast. Um, it can be Mac or PC. I think most uh, in general, I think that the Mac is probably more the industry standard, but that's not true because you, you, you work on a PC. Is that correct, Nick? Or what is, what is your setup? I'm on a Mac. My wife's on the PC. <laughs> okay, great. So you work with both. Yeah. Um, and you can you can also get started just on an iPad. You can get this. You can run your run your everything off of an iPad. Um, anything that you would say, Nick, in terms of what people need to know or think about in terms of computers, as my my computer here is, um, my husband tells me it needs to be replaced. It's it's huffing and puffing a little bit. It's got a fan going. So it's not ideal. But, um, what, any recommendations or things to think about? Not recommendations per se, but the, the um, fan is the big thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the fan's the big thing. Um, one of the things, my wife's computer as well is starting to get a little older. Where we've realized she cannot be on Zoom. She cannot be doing anything video related on her computer before she's going to record. Otherwise, that fan's kicking in because we do. We both do with our computers in the booth. I have a Mac Book Pro. I. I know how to control the fan on this. Um, it rarely, if ever, kicks on, so it's never been an issue for me with recording. Um, mm -hmm. Otherwise, I know a lot of people, they've got their computer out of the booth, and then we're talking Bluetooth 
or running cables in. So you've got the portable monitor up on your wall. You'll have the Bluetooth keyboard, mouse, anything else you can get in there so you can still control your sound. Macs are the most popular these days, um, especially the Mac, the um, Airbooks. Those mm -hmm. are the big ones a lot of people are using. Um, iPads, some people are using as their second screen instead of oh, okay. as their actual computer. That's more of like, I've just, I've got my monitor, I've got my controls, but this is what I'm reading off of instead. Mm -hmm. And that's fine. I mean, that's for your eyesight, that's better than your phone. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yes, especially if you don't want to split your screen between like, oh, I've got this much room for copy, this much room for my DAW. I can kind of see what I'm doing, but I'm scrolling a lot and scrolling can create noise. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. So Good. that's any, that's your thing. To any any around. questions about converting uh the convert step your audio interface? You've got your microphone that plugs into your audio interface that plugs into your computer. Any questions there? Okay. Uh, I think I've seen in the past before somebody asks a question. There is not a huge difference between cable quality <laughs> oh. because that somebody that always comes up of is the two hundred dollar XLR cable better than the twenty dollar cable? I have never spent more than $60 for cables, and that's only because of length. Oh, okay. Good to know. Good to know. And they do, they do, they do fizzle out. They like, can, so yes. if, if that's a troubleshooting thing, if something's going on, it might be a cable. Yeah. Are there other questions, uh, Kelsey and Jeffrey? Yes. We have Ooh. one from um, Greer St. John. Yeah. Oh, what's, what's your question, Greer? Do you want know, to come off and... Ask your question, or is it? Do you want to just say it out? I'll that's... say it out. Okay, yeah. Um, could you repeat the kind of Mac that others are using? Uh, the most popular right now is the Airbooks, because they're really light and small, so they're easy to walk around with. Um, but pretty much any laptop is fairly good with Macs. Um, I guess I have a MacBook Pro, and it's light and easy to transport, and does fine. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Okay. Good, good, good. Um, yeah. Okay. Let's keep on going because we got a little bit. So you need something to edit. This is called your DAW. This is a digital audio workstation. So a digital audio workstation is basically once your voice is in your microphone through the interface in the computer, how do you interact with it? Right? And how do you edit what you've created? And how do you monitor what you've created, making sure the levels are okay visually? Um, so there's lots and lots of different uh, ways that you can approach this. These are just a few. Um, and I think everyone at every level has different ways that they approach this. Um, there are several uh, programs that are free that you can start with and you can continue with actually. Um, Nick, you just added the Pro Tools first. So Pro Tools used to be the fanciest, fanciest, fancy, complicated, most thing. And now there's a version that you can do for free. So um, the CP means cross platform um, on this on this chart. Um, yeah, I personally run Twisted Wave because I think it's an incredibly simple, elegant solution that does just what we need for voiceover, and that makes me happy. Um, so, so that's that's what I use. It recently has moved to a subscription based. Um, Nine ninety nine per month is the most that you would pay. You can also do an annual program there, um, but that's you know that's just setting up your your storefront. So. It's okay to, to pay a little rent on your storefront. And um, yeah, any, anything else to add here about uh, DAWs, Nick? And why, why, would you have, why would you have one that costs more? What, 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 what are you looking for in a DAW? Sure. The thing with the DAWs costing more and whatnot is because DAWs are built for music. They're not actually mm -hmm. built for voiceover. So the more and more you're paying, the more bells and whistles they have for music. Mm -hmm. You don't need to buy the ridiculously expensive stuff. You're not going to use 90% of it then. Really, all you need is something to record, something where you can cut and paste. And that's about it in the case of most jobs, because most jobs are doing it in-house with an engineer. They're doing your cleanup. Mm -hmm. If you're doing audiobooks, now you're doing your own cleanup, same with e-learning, where then you're going to need to know how to do your engineering. I use Audacity for 90% of my work. 
mm -hmm. with RX10 plugged into it. Mm -hmm. um, I've started working with Pro Tools a little bit just to see like, well, they came out with a free version. Let's take a look and see what it does. I would use it for my own recording. I would not use it for engineering just because it can't do what I need it to do with everything I do on it. Mm -hmm. um, and also when you're doing all this stuff for recording and you're starting out, why pay for something where there are free versions where you're just recording? Mm -hmm. Use your money elsewhere. The DAW yeah. you don't have to. The only DAW I would caution against is GarageBand only because it exports everything as stereo, which nobody wants. Right, 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 right. Yeah. But and unfortunately, if it's... unfortunately, I'm sorry. Unfortunately, okay, with the subscription packages now, everything is actually becoming more and more expensive than just buying it outright. It's now actually cheaper to buy the Logic Pro for 200 than to keep doing Twisted Wave for a couple of years because now you're paying mm -hmm. more than that after a certain period, which is terrible. Right. Although it does make up for all the years that Tomas did not charge for it. So um, <laughs> it's a good, good product. Yeah. Um, good, good, good. Um, but recognize that you, you can get started with what you have. I think GarageBand usually comes with stuff, so it may not be where you land. Um, and then do know that, that um, it is kind of, you can, most of these things do basically the same stuff. So you'll find your work workflow. It's not that they're vastly different. There's going to be versions of all the things that you need to do, um, but you know you get used to it. You get used to your workflow. So just notice as you're beginning, maybe not get you know notice to play, play around with with some to to see what resonates with how your brain works and things like that. Because um, it's kind of like if you get a, I've only used Macs all my life, and I look at a PC and I'm like, oh, I don't know what to do with this i see it kind of works but um yeah any questions about daws digital while we're, while audio we're questions there's also tons of experts on each daw out there that mm -hmm. you can easily reach out to and they charge a minimal fee of they'll listen to your file i do the same thing of like 25 bucks i'll listen to your file you show me your setup and what your what processes you're running and i'll tell you like what's working and what's not same mm -hmm. as anybody else out there um but like i said there are specific people for specific daws you would reach out to for example if you're using Studio One, Don Barnes is the guy you go talk to. He practically helped them invent the thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. Um, and then, uh, well, here's here's a good question to note. I think moving, you know, moving into the gearhead. I think as you start opening up to the world of um, opening up to the world of um, <clears throat> of uh, sound engineering. There's a lot of uh, talk about like, oh, I need a stack and I need to process things. Um, the way, way we approach things at the dojo is keep it as raw as possible. Like in voiceover, think about where voiceover fits into a production. Everything else is there. We put one track in. We don't want we would we want to, that to be as pure and as unadulterated as possible, like a fresh face with no makeup, right? Mm -hmm. And then the engineer is the makeup artist, and they'll put it in the context. So the ideally, um, having something that is as raw as possible and sounds great is fantastic. And then if you live somewhere noisy, there might be things that you need to adapt and just adjust, but. You don't have to get caught up in having a lot of processing on anything that you send in, because what we want to hear, as Nick said in the beginning, is your voice, the sound of your voice in a, in a room. So, yeah. Um, also, the stacks are a money pit, because the second you change anything in your booth, your stack is now completely useless. Mm. And you have to go pay for a whole new one, because mm. it's like, oh, I now sit three inches to the left. Well, now your stack doesn't work and everything sounds weird. Mm -hmm. or you've changed booths, you've changed microphones, again, the stack is now completely useless. You now have to go pay for it again. Right. So that goes back to the idea of keeping it simple. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, okay, let's keep on going. Uh, you need something to listen to, listen listen to your work. Um, having it um, so that you can listen closely is a good idea. Um, here's uh, some, some headphones of varying prices. I guess I could have just put 150 instead of 149.95, but um, <laughs> that'll save you a lot there. Um, so either headphones or studio monitors. Uh, usually you want to have two, so you're getting the, the sound in both ears. Um, and um, the things to remember is avoid noise canceling 
um, headphones, things in your ears, and gaming headphones, which are designed for different purposes. So we don't, noise canceling are specifically made to keep voices out. Um, so just notice that. So if you do have gaming headphones, what, what's your advice about that, Nick? Like in terms of start where you are. Um, headphones, I wouldn't spend more than $100 on a pair of headphones and that doesn't engineer. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm totally happy with the $90 pair that I've got. I don't remember what it is and it's not in my booth because I don't use headphones in my booth unless mm -hmm. I'm talking with a client. That is yeah. the only time I will have headphones on in the booth because I like to hear what the booth itself sounds like. Right. And, and also, also that's, that's as, especially as you're training, that's something we encourage as well. Um, because let's do a, a super quick, a super quick uh, thing that I call the poor man's cans. So everybody at your house, do this, put your hands, you put your hands behind your head, elbows up, and now talk into the room and notice, notice how, how it sounds and how we're in relationship, even though we're talking virtually, like we're, we're connecting. Now put on your poor man's cans, which is just bringing your elbows in and now keep on talking. And notice how everyone else goes away except for your dreamy, awesome voice. That's wow. It's really good. Um, so that's what happens when you put headphones on, right? And so it's 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 intoxicating, right? Because our voices are oh, it's nice. That's that's so nice. But it it keeps us separated from us in the room, and it's not the sound of what's what you know what is happening in the room. So when you're working to make that connection authentically you don't want to get dependent on it and then there's the paradox that when you're in a session you probably will have headphones on because that's how we connect to uh, the teams in other in other places so you've got to be able to be able to work with them and without them so um yeah any questions about headphones and how to listen and why we listen and while we're waiting for that just to bring up monitors there's not a big reason for recording people to have monitors because your computer speakers are fine or you'll have your headphones. Mm -hmm. Monitors is more for mixing than anything else. Where it's okay, like, good, to know. I need, good to know. I need to hear what the music, like if somebody's got music going into something, how the music and the voice blend together, not just on my headphones, but in real time outside in the mm -hmm. world. Mm -hmm. Because what sounds great in my headphones may sound terrible out of, the, out of monitors or out of my computer and vice versa. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, good to know, good to know, yeah. All right, any questions about the listen section? Okay, um, let's keep on going. Okay, so quiet. Um, I'm gonna pick up the pace here because uh, you know time. Um, so quiet. Um, there's there's two things. There's not a thing called a soundproof. You're not proofing. There's nothing nothing that you can do to stop sound unless you go to that place in Minnesota that has absolutely no sound or you fly into space. There's no sound proofing. So the things that we're talking about is sound absorption and sound isolation. So that is how do we keep sound from bouncing around and how do we keep sound from outside from outside from coming in? Um, is that accurate, Nick? Yes, you yeah. find you find the balance between the two. Mm -hmm. Not mm -hmm. too much of either one. It's a balancing act. Yeah. Yeah. So um, acoustic foam tiles, acoustic panels, sound traps, sound reflection filters are sort of sound reflection th filters are things that are used within a recording studio to isolate vocals from from blending with other things. But they can they can be useful in in your process. Um, carpeting. Um, in the beginning, just moving blankets or a closet full of clothes is, is great for sound absorption. And then sound isolation is how do you keep yourself away from the sound, right? So interior closets, um, basements are usually down under the earth. However, they are also usually near your um, HVAC, your, your mechanical equipment for the house. So that's not good. Um, and you're creating Right, exactly, exactly. Highly reflective. Uh, <laughs> right, right, right. Um, and um, and double walled construction. Uh, if you have, you know, when you get to a place, if that is part of your journey, to have a custom built studio, they are built with um, double walled construction and air in between, and 
um, you know, so there's there's ways and then lift it up off the floor. So there's ways that we separate the sound, isolate the sound. Um, yeah, um, we can do just here's a little test you can do. Like I need to do a little bit more work in here. Mine is a little bit is a little echoey here. I've got a six by six booth. So but clap your hands. Where do you where do you hear the echo? Right. If I go over here. It's a little duller. Um, yeah, but you can find where where things are reflecting, right? Um, yeah, cool. So that's that's the thing. This is not going to be perfect. It just needs to sound good, right? It doesn't have to be perfection. So, um, any questions about this? Quiet. Okay. Uh, let's keep on going. Ventilation, we just talked about this. Take it into consideration. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, airflow and temperature, um, fan noise, air conditioning noise, um, and heat. Um, this booth is great in the in the winter because it's 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 in my garage and and um, I need to get the ventilation system going because it's like a you know like a rotisserie chicken cooker um, in the summer. So, um, you know, how, how do you keep yourself cool um, is, is, is part of the dunes. Any, any thoughts about this, Nick, keeping yourself cool? Oh, I mean, New York City, every summer, anyone with a home studio is basically doing it in their bathing suit. <laughs> right. <laughs> the, the ice vests are interesting. Um, I would be worried about the melting inside your booth. But that's oh right. <laughs> um, otherwise, it's the I will record for twenty minutes and throw the door open. And go, oh, air, yay! Because yeah. <laughs> even with like I've got the fan going on in here right now, I don't think anybody hears it. But for recording, I turn it off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So this is this is one of the one of the great great uh, issues. Um, and then there is the idea of connectivity. Um, so this is so we can run a session in our booth. Um, you need to have good internet speed and reliable internet, right? For the most part, uh, you need to have a session not glitching or holding up because that will not be usable. So um, these are ideal download and upload speeds. Um, it's better to have a hardwired ethernet and then reliable Zoom or Skype, I think. Um, I don't know. It seemed like Skype years ago was the thing, but I don't know anybody. I don't Few think I've had a, a Skype session, even even with Europe now. Um, yeah, and then um, there's there's several different options. Um, the industry standard that developed over the um, pandemic is called Source Connect. Basically, what that is is I'll record here. Uh, we'll open Source Connect to the studio that is where the engineer is is um, working on the project. We'll we'll connect through through Source Connect, and then that engineer will be recording directly from my computer to their computer. Is basically what happens over the internet. That that happens. Um, so uh, Source Connect is a little bit of an investment, either a 650 license or $35 a month, and it does cost a little bit to set up. Can you talk a little bit about Source Connect Nexus? Uh, Nick, this just started. This yeah, just this is brand new. It's their free version where you won't have to go through the license and all that stuff anymore because they realize a lot of people were doing the 30 day for free and then just shutting it off because most of us weren't having every day Source Connect, so it wasn't cost effective. So they said, well, why don't we just make a free version where anybody that's, especially people who are not tech savvy, can just go and record with us and, or their clients, and mm -hmm. it's nice and easy. They just released it this past month. I know Jeffrey went to the webinar yesterday on them because he posted online. Ha -ha. Mm -hmm. um, I was unable to do that. I've still got stuff to flip through on that thing. But everything they've said, everything they've shown, it looks like it's going to be the next big thing for everyone with recording. And I know a couple of studios out here have already been using it. Mm -hmm. That's good. And it's nice because Source Connect, once you have it set up, is usually like pretty foolproof, but it, there are some steps to get it set up and 
um, trouble students so that there's a simpler way. Um, and then these are some other options that also exist. IPGDL, um, Nick was like, who's using that anymore? But it I is. Don't know it anyone is, who does. <laughs> <laughs> it is. I know. I know when my Source Connect pooped out during a session, we went to it as a, a backup, and then that didn't work. But yeah, um, yeah. Connection Open is another resource. Podalgo Call um, and Session Link Pro might be uh, other things that you might have, and. Um, yeah, it's, it's good to get familiar with all of them because you might be working with a studio that has something different. So then you're relaxed and relaxed and have it ready. Um, good. Uh, but this is something that you have, when you need it, you have to have it. Then the question becomes, when do you need it, right? So if you're not actively auditioning for jobs, you don't need it. Um, if you when you know if you book a job, uh, off, you know, be from a referral or something else, um, you can find somebody who has a who has a booth or can get you set up, right? Um, or you can you can do something like Nexus now. So it's it's this little another little catch twenty two about um, about voiceover. So um, I'm sorry. Were there any questions about the connectivity? Um, I, I had a question from before. Um, I think Nick said you don't want things in stereo. Why, why is that? Because your voice is a solo source. It is not coming from two sides. It's coming from one. So you would only do mono, not stereo for that. Mm -hmm. I see. And, and, and also how your voice gets laid into anything. If it gets laid into something with, um, with music or, or something with, you know, the, the other, other sounds of the of the visuals. Um, it's just one thing. Um, yeah. Yeah. So when I record because and I then I listen to it with headphones, it only comes out from like one ear. So that's how you're supposed to do it. It should actually end up coming out of both because it's coming out of a center. So you should hear it here with stereo. You can pan it right and left, but I can do that with mono as well once I've got control of it. But the record should be right down the middle and in one and in one source. Um, stereo, you're gonna have, you're gonna want coming from, because then it comes from one side, from the other, it goes back and forth while you're recording. You don't want that with your voice because all of a sudden that means that your voice is not aimed straight at, the, at your recording source. Okay, thank you. Yeah, good question. Good question. Um, so, guys, we're gonna go. Uh, we're gonna go probably till um, eleven thirty to get questions. So we'll, we'll we'll go a little longer than perhaps. Um, have so um everything's recorded so if you need to roll at the top of the hour that's okay but we're gonna we're gonna go on we're gonna talk next about the evolution of your booth and as as it's been unfolding um there's places places to begin and you want to start with where these words start where you are and start with what you can with what you have or what you can. So, the first the first part of um, the first part of getting your studio together is understanding that it's going to cost something. So you need to have some budget for getting something set up, right? And even if that is the most DIY or borrow or you know borrow it or inherit it or um, you know find it uh, you know find it um, find it used there's ways that you can get started. Um, so we'll breeze through these, but this is a sort of do it yourself setup. Uh, Nick said, you know, this is how he he began. This is budget less than less than 500. Um, you can have your phone ready to read copy an iPad ready to record a canvas box with some like a minimal amount of acoustic foam. The uh, this is a refurbished Apogee mic 96, uh, which is very affordable, and uh, you know a refurbished iPad Mini. You can get something going. Um, Nick, you said this is how you started. What was that experience? Um, it worked for me only because of where my apartment was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was mm -hmm. on the fourth floor, facing in, not on the street uh, side. And mm -hmm. so, because the problem is not what's on the back side of the mic; it's where I am. It's mm -hmm. everything behind me. That's your problem now because that's mm -hmm. where all the noise is coming from because it's going straight into the mic from there. So I lucked out of, we have a tapestry, 
We have blankets. There's stuff I can hang up. Also, just the amount of stuff hanging in our studio apartment at the time. Mm -hmm. So it was fine for that. The only thing I had to worry about was this one kid at the daycare out in the courtyard. Screaming. <laughs> <laughs> not, the rest, not the rest of the kids, just this one kid. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's a way that you can get started. Um, and I would not suggest doing live on those. Oh, right, right, right. So that, that's that's an interesting, interesting. Why? Because it, it sounds terrible to them. And, they, and your clients uh, are okay. very, very nervous. Um, my wife had done a little analytical thing with a company here in New York where she sent them her raw and then what I did to it. And they were shocked at the difference because mm, I've got the history. Okay. I have the engineering history of like, I'm doing a few tricks. Here we go. And it sent it in like, that sounds pristine. Like she's in a booth. I was like, yeah, I can do that for, for things where I just record and send in for the live session. You guys are all going to freak out though. Okay. Great. 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 So, so then, so then, um, cause we, we all aren't married to brilliant sound engineers. Um, we need to know the limitations of that basic setup, right? Yes. So it's it's maybe more an audition, an audition sound, um, mm -hmm. but it is something that you can start with. Okay, good to know. Good to know. Um, here's a, another way that you can do it yourself is to create a booth out of PVC. Um, there's some that are pre-made, or you can get instructions for them. Um, so this is basically creating a structure and then hanging uh, various layers of um, uh, moving blankets or sound blankets to create a, to create a booth, like a, a tent booth almost. Yeah. Um, and this, this is also something that is portable, right? So if you live in an apartment, it's a good, it's a good solution. You can create different configurations of it. It could be a square, it could be bigger, it could be smaller. Um, it's pretty, you don't have to be terribly technically adept to do it. Um, so this is a good, this is also a good place to start. Um, Kelsey, I think you might be in your, uh, PVC booth. Is that correct? Yes, I am. Yeah. Um, anything to share about that experience of, of putting that together? Um, so mine is like a architectural, uh, nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, because I'm in an apartment and I um, have it, it's like I have two mounts in the walls and then I put the PVC pipe in that and then there's a joint and it's suspended from my ceiling. Oh, that's so, cool. Like, yeah, my my uh, booth is like a almost like a big changing room that I've mm -hmm. added. And then also I wrapped a sound blanket underneath as the bottom. Mm -hmm. so it's like a proper booth and also mm -hmm. i'll say if you i mean you didn't hear this from me but mm -hmm. if you're in an apartment spackle exists <laughs> <laughs> and that's all i'm gonna say about it i was gonna it. say your deposit's going away when they when you clear yeah. that out <laughs> <laughs> yeah good 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 so this is this is also this is something that you can do um uh, this is this is uh, how I usually travel. This is my travel setup. There's the hype mic. I travel with um, a little bundle of velvet hangers that I have twist ties on, that creates a little um, that creates a little stand for the microphone, and just hang it up and then put the put the computer on a shelf. Um, so, you know, I spent two and a half months in Maui and created a little little closet booth like that. Um, so that's um, having a travel setup is is a good a good thing because we need to be on call wherever we are. Um, this was my first my first home studio, um, a dedicated closet. Uh, Nick, you said yours was a dedicated closet until baby came, um, but this this was a setup with um, with lovely lovely thick uh fancy curtains that i had inherited from someone who had moved from the upper east side um <laughs> and um uh yeah so you can create a space within your closet um and then you just need to figure out what 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 needs to be covered what needs to be not covered um in terms of the sound reflection and things like that um 
This is a picture of Sensei Cat's studio in Minneapolis. She has a whole room that she's converted into her studio with um, with um, sound absorption panels and a, um, and a side wall. Um, she lives in a quiet neighborhood in Minneapolis, but she has the sound traps in the whole space. Um, yeah, so that's that's another way to do if, if you're lucky enough to have a whole room that you can create as as a space. Oh, and with cats also keep in mind her recording microphone is actually where you see those blankets over a box. That's where she records the one over the computers where she talks to people. Oh, okay. I didn't realize that. Okay. Yeah, because we've done, there was a couple of times where I was working with her um, in that degree, and she's like, I'm going to record something. Hang on. And she hops over to the side. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. Yeah. Yeah. And that's Dobby, her dog. Um, <laughs> and then this is this is this studio. This is um, this uh, is a six by six whisper room. I did not pay twelve thousand dollars for it. I got it for like half of that. Um, it's and and so this is this is what you can aspire to. Um, a studio bricks is another uh, uh, like kind of the oh, oh, an arrival. An arrival. Do you feel do you feel like your studio bricks is an arrival or? A necessary thing. <laughs> um, well, it, it started as a necessary just because we had to turn the closet back into a closet. Mm -hmm. um, but it's one of those things of like, you feel a little bit more empowered with it. I will definitely mm -hmm. say that. But also, I don't know about yours. Mine was not record ready. I still had to augment this thing. Yeah. Where mm -hmm. there's just like, oh, I mean, I have to deal with a massive glass door right here, which is tons of reflection. So mm -hmm. what could I do in the rest of the booth to fix that? Because I didn't want to lose the light coming in this. Mm -hmm. um, also, because like this is in my bedroom. So it's like sometimes I need to see what's going on outside of here. Right, um, right, so right. I've got various foam up there that I've played with or in corners mm -hmm. where it's just yeah. to what I have to do. And I know you've had to do work on yours as well, you said. Yeah, yeah, very much so, very much so. And and that is the key to all of this, guys. Um, we, everyone's space is going to be unique to them. There's no like one size fits all. Everyone's uh, everyone's space is going to be what what are you working with in that space at this time, and what what can optimize what you have. But it's all going to be individual. Um, uh, Jeffrey, you you were saying that Nick came to your house and and tell tell him that story. Oh, uh, that you're like, oh didn't even have to come over. Just no, we did. <laughs> Yeah. I, and and what did what was he able to tell? My my favorite my favorite part of our interaction so far is when I sent a sample of recording over to Nick and uh Nick came back and said, Okay, so here's this, 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 and uh, Nick, you outlined a bunch of stuff, and then you said, Is there metal in your booth? And I said Oh yeah, that was the vibe. I'm sorry, of like yeah like you you heard how does one hear metal i don't understand but i was like i don't think so and i moved aside some clothes in my closet and i said oh right we had some like metal window bars that um our landlord had taken out so we could put our air conditioner in and i'd stowed them in the closet forgotten about them and <laughs> nick you were just like yeah i heard metal yeah i heard mm. metal on metal there was metal vibrating next to itself i was like are, are there pieces of metal somewhere in there? What's going on? <laughs> yeah. So this is, so the whole idea of, of this, of this, like, what is it to, what is it about a booth and how can it be is just get started on how to think about it and what you can, we can start exploring and growing with. And then you always want to, until you, you know, uh, until you develop a real understanding of what it should, what, what it should sound like is what uh, our friend Dan Leonard always says. Um, um, you know, that, that you'll, de you'll develop a, a sense of that is good sound and that is not good sound. And then have someone help you get set up to optimize your space, but it's going to be an individual journey. Right, what works in one person's space may not be the answer for someone else's space, but you, it's it's going to be, um, yeah. Everyone's going to develop it for themselves. And again, another paradox in that now more than ever, 
your sound is being auditioned with you. Your sound quality is super, super, super important. It's not just your take on, on a, a piece of copy. However, if you have the best sound in all of North America, it doesn't matter if your reads aren't up to snuff. So we're always developing our skills and then we have a nice, a nice thing that, that it, it always, it's always clean and clear, right? Our sound is always clean and clear so that we, our work can, can be put in its best light. So, um, questions about this evolution. Um, hopefully, hopefully this was helpful. Um, oh, let me, let me do one more thing and then we'll, we'll open it up to big questions. So where do you get all this stuff? Um, if you're not in the realm of buying audio equipment, you may not have a, a sense of where to go. Um, these are three, um, pretty, uh, big and standard resources. B and H photo is based in New York, but it, you can order from anywhere. It's a great place. It's a really cool place if you are in New York to go and experience. It's kind of like Wonka, Wonka factory of, of audio equipment. Um, uh, musician's friend, we were just talking about this is a subsidiary of Guitar Center. It's, you can buy things online. There's actually a good President's Day sales going on right now at Musician's Friend. And Sweetwater is another uh, well-known and well-respected um, uh, well known for their kind customer service not that everyone else isn't friendly but but sweetwater is like really well known for their kind customer service um and they send you candy and they send you candy so and if you do happen to go to a guitar center to just get your hands on something or see how something sounds understand the first thing that nick said that most recording equipment is set up for music and most people that are at a guitar center might probably be taking it from a music a music recording uh, point of view. So if you do go to some place like that, um, see if you can talk to somebody who is maybe more oriented towards setting up voiceover equipment. Um, there's a Facebook group called the VO Gear Exchange um, that you might not hop on. It's a good place because as, as things evolve, it's kind of like hermit crabs, right? You outgrow this shell, but somebody else needs it. So you get your bigger one, but then there's your shell. Um, so, so there's always someone, um, either outgrowing, outgrowing, upgrading, um, or, um, not doing this anymore. <laughs> like people sometimes go like, oh, I'll get all this stuff. And they're like, oh, I don't want to do that. So, um, so there's always opportunities. Um, I got my booth because, uh, Kim was moving to, um, Arizona. He was retiring and he couldn't bring this big booth. So, you know, that was, that was a benefit for me. And then, um, Kelsey, can you share a little bit about, um, audio test kitchen? Kelsey was just sharing this fantastic resource, um, as well, just super cool. Yeah. So I'm ex so excited to share this because, um, I wish I would have known about it at the beginning of my journey. <laughs> uh, but, um, so there's this thing and I put the correct link in the chat. I'm sorry. I didn't realize it had app dot audio test kitchen.com but anyway um it has 300 different microphones you can choose from and basically you can compare them um they like record the microphone in all of the same environmental settings so distance song everything and you can compare them back to back tish can i show do you mind oh yeah sure 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 okay i've got it pulled up here that way it'll oh. make sense. Do, 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 do. There, go. there we go. Okay. Here it is. You can um just put some oh it said log in. Girl, I'm logged in on a different browser. Hold on. <laughs> That's how you know you're a tech head when you're switching back and forth between multiple browsers. Yeah, exactly. I have like <laughs> 17 different browsers. Um, so like I was looking at these and basically you just uh, put it. Oh, my gosh. We just see your. Um, your login. Okay. Still. So you can drag the mic. Oh, we, we still see your login, Kelsey. Might oh. need to reshare your screen. Oh, 
Okay, hold on. Oh, that's because it's... Okay, hold on. Sorry. Give me just a second. It's trying to share my other browser. Ha ha ha. Um, okay, you should be able to see it now. Um, you can drag mics up into this and basically compare them. They have different songs you can choose from with different types of voices. And you can listen to all of the mics in that song, basically. That's a huge discovery. I know, I know. Um, and then there's blind, there's normal mode up at the top. And then there's also blind mode where you can play. You don't even have to play the whole song either. You can just play small sections. Um, that way you aren't biased. So you're not like, oh, that's just an AT2020. Of course, it's not going to sound as good. Mm -hmm. I yeah. actually put my AT2020 compared to a bunch of like thousand dollar mics. And I was like, oh, surely I'm not going to like the AT. It was my top pick. <laughs> In the, in the blind in the blind yeah. yeah we did we, we did a we did a day at um apogee studios in santa monica mm -hmm. and they had a uh a neumann u87 and um uh, they had a few mics and then their hype mic and it was like hmm you can't tell the difference but three thousand dollars yeah. i don't know exactly. yeah exactly and then you can also uh if you like the way it sounds you can add it to your cut board and it'll mm -hmm. go right here and then you can test the ones that you liked next yeah. to each other so that's great. anyway yeah that's awesome yay thank you for sharing that mm -hmm. fantastico um yeah which brings us back to uh brings us back to do re me fa let's see um let me just reshare here because we're just about done, but I want to, um, what's going on here? Oh, share screen. Boink. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Just hop back on here. Um, yeah. So uh, before we open up for questions, just wanted to uh, let you know that we do this uh, every month, the third the third Wednesday of every month is Get to Know VO. Um, first Wednesday of every month is Ask the Sensei. There's always ways to be staying connected with the dojo, and we are here to meet you where you are and get you where you'd like to be. So um, we do have, a, if you're just starting or early on or, um, uh want to recharge or re you know re reinvigorate um we do have uh you should do voiceover launch pad work and workouts coming up uh starting on saturday so you can talk to us about that if you're looking for a full um a full like a full training program that um meets you where you are and really gives you um, consistency, connection, continuity, and connect community and connection. Um, our mystery to mastery program might be something you're interested in. And then uh, that's our development division. And then um, our working pro division includes the nth degree working pro, uh, nth degree program for working pros, um, workouts and focus action forums. And then uh, three times a month, we also have our VO Dojo Pro Fight Club, which is our working pro workout that brings together top-notch talent with the decision makers who hire us um, to participate demo reps and booking is the criteria and everyone can come be a spectator it's a really powerful powerful resource no matter where you are in your journey so that's that's just a reminder that we are here to support you in all ways and um let's open it up to questions and if you are interested in talking with us more this is the um this is the the uh, address to sign up for a voiceover once over a voo so you can talk with jeffrey and we'll get to know who you are and where you are and where you want to be so um yeah we would love to talk with you more about all of this so um yeah. so well done everybody um so we've got you know like 15 minutes or so for for questions what um what questions do we have i think we know questions so um give you a second of that but what what questions do you have um you can put them in the chat and then uh kelsey will, will um 
bring you into the room to get your voice in the room. Yeah, mm. uh, Dina Michelle, she had to leave. Oh, okay. Um, but she uh, she asked a couple of questions. So replay friends, yeah, I've yeah, got yeah. your questions. <laughs> um, so she said, so generally, do you just do basic editing on your files or like should you not edit them at all or what's the deal with that? Well, that's a great question. Um, I usually just do basic editing, like tops and bottoms, and then create a natural flow within or, you know, so I, and I might be like, oh, I like that take. I'll lose these. So I, I create a natural flow, not pushing everything totally together. Um, how do you approach it, Nick? I do roughly the same where it's like I will do a couple takes, pick which take I like try not to Frankenstein takes together if I don't have to. Um, and then at most, I'll raise the gain a little bit if I felt I recorded a little softly. Mm -hmm. And that's it, because nine times out of 10, and especially with me coming from the engineering side, if I say I want it raw, I mean I want it raw. I don't want mm -hmm. you touching it. Like really don't, don't even put moisturizer on your face. <laughs> don't worry about your mouth clicks. Don't worry about your breaths. I will take care of all that. That's mm. not your problem if I say raw. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think it's I think it's a mixed uh, you know, we don't want it to be we don't want to be so messy that it takes away from the the take, right? That exactly. it distracts from the take because you redid something or you're repeating something or you have a big like burp or slurp or something like that. We don't want it to take our attention away from it but we don't have to be precious about it. And I think a lot of, a lot of editing uh, also comes down into how do you optimize your workflow, right? Because it's one thing to record, recording takes X amount of time and then editing takes X amount of time and you have so many auditions to do in a day and so much time a day in which to do them. So it's kind of figuring out how to optimize, how to optimize it. It also goes back to what I was saying about my old setup where I didn't do live stuff. Mm -hmm. um, because if all of a sudden you do all this engineering to your stuff and send them this massively clean file to them and they request a live session in your booth and that's not what shows up when they come on. Right. You make the job that day, they're not coming back though. Right, right, right. That's that's a powerful, powerful thing to note. Um, yeah. Um, BB has a question. Mm -hmm. um bb you can either speak up for yourself or i can read it for you um the one about sanitizing oh yeah 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 do we, do we want to hear your voice in the room bb if not it's okay i can read it okay um sh so bb asks is it possible to have a booth that one can sanitize on occasion um Naturally, I don't mean the mic. For example, acoustic blankets are not cleanable and neither are carpeted walls. Do you have any advice for that other than we're all goblins? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I vacuum this booth regularly. I like, you know, vacuum it off. Um, I know that um, Tim Friedlander at Soundbox, um, during the pandemic, Soundbox LA was one of the few um, approved approved um covid places and he has like a big i don't know what it is like a uv thing or something like that so there are fancy fancy things that you can get um and i think that has more to do with um air filter air filter things um than than fabric but um any any thoughts now because anything that's wipe downable is going to be reflective surface so yeah, it comes down to where are you and how much room do you have because if you're going to clean blankets and whatnot your best bet is like say you live in the country or somewhere where you have a garage it's going to be real nice to just take them down and then clean them in the garage lying them down on the ground because mm -hmm. um, you can't put them in a washer machine you can't put them in a dryer they're too large unless you have crazy industry washer dryers at home i'm not going to judge you <laughs> um, otherwise i would say especially like if you have a studio works if you have a whisper room talk to the manufacturer they will give you ideas um mm -hmm. but i would also suggest any cleaning solutions you do inside that booth do it early in the morning and then do not and then leave the door open do not hop in that booth for 24 hours let everything mm -hmm. dissipate keep, make sure you keep track of your own health because you don't know how you're going to react to some of these chemicals or even if they say they're organic there's still chemicals in them mm-hmm 
Yeah. And that, you know, that's, that's something with, with blankets themselves. Um, like you can get, you can get moving blankets for not very much money, but one of the off gassing thing is, is something that you do need to take into consideration. Good questions, guys. What, what, what else, Kelsey, who's next? Someone asked something about um, backstage, like booking work with backstage. I know that's not exactly tech related, but I did ask yeah. the question. Yeah. Um, uh, well, it, it, let, I think I think this is focused more on uh, on yeah. studio stuff. Um, so maybe um, maybe that's a good thing to uh, to touch base on a VOO, and we can talk about that. We do have a working relationship with with backstage so we can talk about that um so and yeah, then why don't you need to use a converter uh when you're using usb oh good question good question um so uh, do you want to take this nick because you'll probably go more uh concisely to exactly what it is i can like kind of draw a picture and stuff but the main reason is just the tech doesn't need it because the usb plugs right into your computer and the computer then does all the work um, the only reason for the converter is because you're using a mic that plugs into an XLR cable, and an XLR cable will not plug directly into your computer. So you don't need a converter. You don't need an interface. You don't need any of that stuff. And the, there's also um, a, a, a condenser mic needs an outside source of power, mm -hmm. and a USB has that outside source of power built in. So so that's another that's another thing that happens. Uh, the the phantom power so you need to make sure that that's on otherwise the mic doesn't run because it doesn't have any electricity running through it the way that a condenser mic uh captures sound is there's an electronic there's an electronic disc that um when the sound hits it collects the information electronically so it needs a source of it needs a source of electricity to be able to work and a USB mic has that um, that power source in, in included in it, so it can plug right into your computer. Awesome. And then Casper, Casper just keeps rapid firing with these great questions. So Casper, come on in. A lot so of more is, people are asking the same thing as you, believe it or not. Uh, what exactly is gain? Because I also got a comment about that recently. I don't know what that is, to be honest. That's great. No, 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 it's great. That it is volume control. So when I say I'm turning up the gain, it means I'm making myself louder. Turning down the gain, I'm making myself softer. Mm. So any reason why you say that as opposed to just um, increasing the volume? <laughs> Voice over lingo, showbiz. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think I, I'm 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 kind of making this up, but if you if you look at if you look at a sound wave, right? The middle of a sound wave is it's like looking at a seismograph it's not that the top is loud and the bottom is low it's how wide is the sound how wide is the sound and so you're gaining you're gaining more wavelength i think that uh, i might be making that up but that that's what makes sense like no you're you're, you're pretty much on point with that tish um i mean gain is in in terms of decibels and it's basically opening the device's ability to interpret the audio. So when you increase the gain, I can keep my actual volume, my speaking voice the same, but as my gain increases, I will sound like I'm being louder, even though I'm not actually changing the volume that I'm speaking. Right. If I wanted to shout, that's increasing my volume, but if it's right, just gain, right, right. it's oh, just yeah, like that, how the device is interpretating the sound That's what waves. it is. And then More with, with with um with uh, with uh, when you do record you want the whole sound wave the whole uh, every part of the sound wave the the up loop and the down loop to be included in your sound wave. you don't want something to cut off so when you raise the gain then we get that whole picture of 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 the whole sound wave and you can do things louder okay gotcha thank you guys yeah good 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 what are the and questions then, uh... I have a question, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Nick, how do you know when it's time to upgrade your mic? If you're booking with your mic and it's getting the work done, how do you know, like, maybe it's it's time, you know? Good what would question. you say? 
That is a wonderful question, and that's going to be a personal choice, really. Um, I decided to upgrade because we were in the middle of lockdown. We had all those government stuff out, and I was like, I've got the money, too. I'd like to get off the USB and mm -hmm. go to a condenser mic, so let's do it. Let's bite the bullet, and my wife agreed, and that's what we decided. Uh, other people have just decided, like, my microphone's starting to go, and it's time to replace it. Do I want to replace it with the same thing, or do I want to upgrade? Mm -hmm. um, because... A lot of times you'll get like those auditions or those jobs where they're saying, you must have absolutely this specific mic. No, you don't. You're, they're saying that because somebody put that buzzword in their ear. They probably don't actually know what they're talking about, unfortunately, when they're asking for that. Because um, a lot of studios won't be very friendly to that mic, or maybe your voice is terrible to that mic. Prime example, um, a Rode mic, not great for people with deep voices. So you wouldn't want to go that direction. Um, if you're thinking like the Sennheiser, if you're thinking the Newman, if you're making the money and your microphone's starting to go and you want to upgrade, I would say go ahead, but try it out first to make sure that it's good for your voice. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. that's going to be the major hurdle. It may be that also you've found the mic that is 100% perfect for you and there's no reason ever to upgrade from that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when I had my dedicated booth, I had an AT4040, which is a great mic. It's just a workhorse. It's like a $300, $400 mic. I had that for many, many years. And then, you know, kind of as a special treat on sale found, you know, from my, my 416, but it was, it, it was fine. It was fine. So it's a good question. And that's where we get, you know, we don't need to get caught up. And when we, when we, um, you know, one of the things I love that Dan Leonard uh, says is we don't, we don't get great equipment to work. We work to get great equipment. So that's, that's a great maxim that he instills. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, start with what you have. And as long as it sounds good, and then find somebody who knows what it sounds like and can tell you, right? You might have the right equipment, but it might be set up wrong. I know the first time <laughs> I've had mics where I was like, why does this sound like shit? And then, and then my musician uh, brother-in-law was like, "Cause you have it set up wrong. You talk in this part." And I was like, "Oh, okay." Um, <laughs> You'd be surprised how often that happens. <laughs> Some of you are talking into the wrong side. So um, yeah, so so you also you you get the equipment, and then how is it set up, and is it working? Working always, yeah. Um, we're right at eleven thirty, guys. Um, are there any other burning questions? we covered them um great great sticking with and um i'm gonna stop this share um can, uh, wait where did we go where did we go here we are um great so many of you staying along um would love to hear what your dojo o's are if you want to type those in um after you uh, before you go and um, thank you all for being here. I hope this was helpful. I know that um, the tech stuff is sometimes things that we get nervous about because we may not know about it. So hopefully it was demystifying. Hopefully it'll help you relax a little bit about it. Um, once again, we always look at how we are thinking about things and then what are the what are the details and then what choices do we make in that? So hopefully this this has been helpful with that. Um, Nick, how do people keep in touch with you if they want to touch base? Sure. I know Jeffrey already put my email down in the chat, which is nsantasir at gmail.com. I will type that in again so everyone can spell that because I know my name's not easy to spell. <laughs> also, that is my website as well in the chat, uh, nsantasiraudioengineer.com. You can also contact me through that as well. Yeah. And yeah. all social media is the same and Santa's here. Yeah. Um, yeah. And um, we'd love to hear from you. Talk, talk about uh, anything, anything that's on your mind um, and get to work, work with y'all and keep you moving towards your sustained, successful voiceover career. That's the idea. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much. We'll see you soon. Um, and uh, Nick, thanks for joining us and being a resource. Um, and um, Kelsey and Jeffrey, thanks for keeping everything going as you do. So we'll see you see yes. you all uh, next time. Hey, Nick, I have a question that I didn't want to make everyone sit here and listen to. <laughs> Ooh, do you no, have any like personal recommendations? So I have like a lower 
register have you do you know of any mics that are better for like lower register voices like mine okay so i never actually give out full-on mic recommendations my my philosophy on it is basically find somebody in the industry who's successful who sounds similar to you okay talk to them they will not hide these facts away ask them what they're using if that's too expensive ask what they used before and keep Mm -hmm. going backwards until you find something in your price range Mm -hmm. that's a great that's great advice thank you yeah yeah all right everyone have a great day and we'll see see you next month on get to know vo and um see you from the dojo bye guys